Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am checking out a really fun bike. It's the Blix Avenue. I actually learned that it's the word Avenue in Swedish. Uh, so you can kind of customize the name because it totally looks like it says Aveni or Aveni, but that's not the correct pronunciation. For the exact pronunciation, I'll turn to my man Pontus. So Pontus, tell me about the inception of this bike. Yeah. So the Aveni, uh, meaning Avenue, like you said, is really a city bike. I mean, you can use it anywhere you want to, right? But it, the whole concept of the bike is to have a really neat, uh, sleek looking uh, urban uh, feel to the bike, but still have a lot of uh, good functionality to it and also really good uh, performance in terms of strong motor and uh, strong or capable battery. Great. Yeah. So yeah, as you were saying, the style is definitely one thing that you notice first off on the bike. It's it's really you know quite good looking. Uh, and this is the bike as it comes stock. There are other accessories that we'll kind of get into in a minute, uh, but it's pretty utilitarian as well as being, uh, you know, pretty striking uh, in its appearance. Uh, definitely a city feel. You got the fenders, the lights, the rack that are all, the lights are integrated in there. The fenders and the rack are kind of go together with the color matching and everything. So it's definitely built for city use. That's kind of the point. Uh, but let's go ahead and get further into the specifications. One of my favorite parts. All right, so we found some shade cover, which is a little bit better of a spot to kind of talk about the avenue from Blix. Uh, so, of course, it's built up for kind of a commuting aspect. So we kind of brought it here to this nice little garden uh, out here in the park area. Um, but it's pretty well decked out with lots of accessories from the get-go so that you don't have to worry about fitting them or finding the right size or things like that. Uh, chiefly things like the lights that are integrated into the main battery, the color matched metal fenders, I love those, and also a rear rack that can actually hold a pretty good amount of weight. We'll talk about a little bit of that with the accessories, but one of my favorite things about the bike is that it is all set to go. You got lights on both front and the back. You're, I mean, you're ready to rock, you know, from the get go. I love commuter bikes, they're really fun. Uh, so let's go ahead and start up at the front of the bike. Uh, so up here you do have a pretty good size of tire with the reflective sidewalls on there. Uh, that's pretty good. I mean, the reflective sidewalls help you get seen from the side, of course. That's why they're on the side of the bike. Uh, but the 275 by 2 tires have a pretty good size to them. 275 is kind of like a, a good middle ground in mountain biking that's starting to spill over into some of the other bicycle styles, such as the commuter. So it has a pretty good tread on it all the way around, including onto part of the sidewall as well. I like the, again, that reflective sidewall is one of my favorite aspects about these tires, particularly the bike in general, because it's good to be seen. You know, when you're out and about, that's a really good safety feature. If you're on a beach cruiser, you're probably not gonna be riding at night, but when you do commute, you gotta ride home at night, particularly in the winter. So having a good set of lights or reflectors on it, it's really nice to be seen. Um, also definitely recommend getting a set of flashing lights. These ones stay steady. Now we'll kind of, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about that when we get to the electric system. Uh, but up front, these tires are pretty good. Uh, they do have some good stability to them with a little bit more width on them. And they're pretty good diameter as well. Um, these are double walled rim with a 13 gauge spoke, 100 millimeter hub spacing, quick release on the front. So that's pretty good. You can get that front wheel off if you wanted to pile this bike into say like a, into the back of a truck or so, you can get the front wheel on and off pretty easy with that quick release, which is nice. This is a rigid fork up front, and that's fine because the rider weight is kind of recessed back a little bit. This definitely isn't what I'd call like an aggressive commuter. This is more of a laid back commuter, uh, and I think that this works out just fine. It's also color matched with the fenders, of course, and also the rest of the bike, uh, which is nice because it definitely gives a really nice aesthetic to it. I mean, that's probably one of the things that you noticed about the Blix bikes is that they look really pretty. <laughs> and this is one of the finer details that kind of makes, uh, makes it do that. Uh, so the brakes on the bike are uh, Tektro Aquia, if I'm saying that correctly. That's a mechanical disc brake that has a really good caliper in here that's kind of lightweight and has a good form factor to it. Uh, it has a 160 millimeter disc uh, on the front of the bike uh, as well as on the back. So you have a mirrored set of brakes uh, which are pretty good. When you get the mechanical disc brakes set up really well, they stop really nice. And I like them a lot because they're really easy to fix. <laughs> so these, of course, uh, do have the pads up in the front and you can adjust that with a simple tool to uh, get that in and out. Kind of getting ahead of myself into th uh, some uh, service side that uh, I come from in the bike shop. Uh, so continuing up uh, on the front of the bike, you have a pretty darn big uh, headset up in here. And that's fine because it goes up into 
the um, goes up into the stem, the adjustable stem, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, so this is actually a nameplate that comes off, you can see with these three screws, and you can attach different accessories up to the front of the bike. We'll talk about that when we get to the accessory part. Um, I'll go back and check some of those out. Uh, coming up to this threaded headset, uh, you do have an adjustable stem, which is pretty cool. With a simple five millimeter hex key, you can loosen that up and actually change the angle of the stem, which is pretty good because if you wanted to get this, get the handlebars a little more forward, or if you wanted to recess them back, depending on the rider or the style, you can do that pretty easy. Um, you do need a tool to do that. It's not what I call like a quick adjust or like a toolless adjust or anything. Um, but I like it this way because it stops people from fiddling with your bike. <laughs> uh, so coming up to the handlebars, these are kind of like the Dutch style or like a mustache style of handlebar. They're not what I'd call like cruiser handlebars that come back um, all the way. So a bike like the Sol from Blix does have that feature where the handlebars kind of come out a little bit and they come back a little. So your hand is kind of like in this position rather than slightly forward. So these, of course, are not handlebars from a mountain bike that are just a straight post and you grab onto it way up front. They kind of reach a good middle ground there. Um, so they do that for comfort, but also for utility. Uh, because with a bike like this, it's much easier to maneuver if you don't have really long handlebars. But I'm thinking like maneuver around obstacles, say if you're getting through a tight spot on a... Um, on a walk path or if you're getting in between a car or so having those big handlebars can be kind of a burden uh, You definitely want them in a more pedestrian environment uh, for the larger ones uh, So these are a really good middle ground for that. I like them a lot uh, Coming up to the grips. They do have like a, a faux leather stitched grip with a nice ergonomic pad on here uh, So these actually have a locking mechanism to keep them onto the handlebars, which is pretty cool the Sol has friction mounted handlebars without that little uh, ring on there um, and also these grips are pretty nice these ones are kind of long on the left side uh, the right side is actually going to be cut down short this bike is actually a kind of like a factory sample and uh, they told me that it has uh, just that one particular thing <laughs> it's the last thing they have to check before they ship them out the door uh, so that's pretty neat um, pretty neat that we kind of got the inside track on that um, so also on the handlebars, you have a good set of brakes, or for the handles that is. There's a nice four finger lever um, with a little rubberized uh, texture on the side of it. Um, and these are pretty good handles too. I like them a lot because you can find them pretty easy. You don't have to squeeze one finger like the mountain bike style. So these are nice. Uh, up on the front, you have this wire loom to kind of keep everything all in a nice pretty looking case. And you do have disconnects for all of your components, uh, except for the light. So you have a nice disconnect for your uh, display, also for the throttle up front, as well as the brake cutoff switches. And we'll kind of talk about that in the electric system. Uh, so the shifter is a Shimano Micro Shift uh, grip shifter, or sorry, Revo, sorry, Shimano Revo Shift on the grip shifter. So it, right now it's in number one, and when you switch it up, that goes to two. It has a really tiny, um, uh, I'm not sure what the, the word is. You don't have to turn it like a full circle, just a little bit in order to get it to switch to the next gear. Um, some of the older ones, you had to twist it. It felt like you had to twist it all the way <laughs> in order for it to turn. Uh, but this one's nice and tight. I like that a lot. Uh, so that's gonna give you a little bit better shifting uh, than say the older models, which is nice. Uh, this is coming back. Let's go ahead and just jump into the back of the bike. And we'll kind of get to the middle. That of course is coming back to this set of gears in the back here. So this is a Shimano cassette. Uh, 14 teeth on the small cog and then 28 teeth on the largest cog. Uh, so that's your cassette. That's coming up from the Shimano Acera uh, derailleur. So that's actually a step up from the tourney. I personally have a bicycle at home with the Shimano Acera. I like them a lot. They've come a long way. Uh, so this is a really good derailleur to have on here. And I think that's a good choice to have for a city bike when you need a little bit more, a um, little more speed, a little more reliability from uh, your system than say uh, a bike that's a little more um, uh, casual. Uh, so on this uh, shifter, that of course is powering up uh, from the front. Towards the middle of the bike, you do have a 48 tooth chain ring uh, up on the front here. Uh, and of course that's coming to this kind of a universal spider system right here. So if say a bike shop could help you out with this, you can actually get this off and switch out the chain ring to something different. You don't have a whole lot of stuff going on up here. 
it's not like a mountain bike where you or a mid-drive motor where there's lots of stuff going on up here you could get a larger chain ring and it's not really going to affect things too much you know it's just going to increase where the chain is along the battery but it's not going to come into contact so if you wanted to customize that you totally could that'd be cool I think it's pretty good the way it is, truth be told. It does have this silver um, Welgo pedal, and I like this metal pedal a lot because it's going to last a long time. It has kind of like this uh, skateboard kind of texture um, on that. I'm sure there's a word for it, like deck tape, I think it is, or something along those lines. Uh, but this is a good pedal. should last a really long time with the reflectors kind of built in there. They're not going to slide out or anything, so that's, that's pretty good. I like that. On the back of the bike, you have more or less a mirrored set from the front. You have the same tire, you have the same wheel, um, but one difference, uh, the brakes are actually the same. One difference is actually the axle. Uh, so this is using uh, an axle that actually has 18 millimeter nuts on both sides. So it doesn't have a quick release and that's due to the motor. It's kind of tough to do a motor with a quick release. Uh, but in this case, the motor is kind of heavy. Um, and also you have to take off this um, quick release uh, for the motor system and that's it and then you can change it like a regular tire so there's not it's not all that complicated but it is kind of intimidating so hopefully that helps you out a little bit that you can get this off with a simple tool unplug that and then you're ready to rock um, so if you wanted to change a tire on that or if you had to um, it's totally possible totally doable but nonetheless the shop can help you out if you need some extra help uh, in that regard uh, so coming up to the middle of the bike, we'll talk about uh, the seat. Uh, so this seat is pretty good. It's about a maybe seven and a half inch wide uh, footprint and kind of a middle ground between something that's athletic with more of a narrow um, kind of nose to it and something that's, um, I guess, more cruiser-esque that has a wider uh, platform. This one is pretty middle ground, so I like it. It's a good choice for the city riding because sometimes in the city, you just want to sit back and kind of relax on your way home from work. And then on the way to work, you just totally go into high gear <laughs> if you're running late. <laughs> it does have a handle on the back here to kind of maneuver the bike. So you have one hand up on the front, the other hand up on the back here, and you can kind of shift the bike around uh, really easily. Uh, we'll talk about the seat post a uh, little bit. Uh, so you'll notice that the quick release is actually mounted to the side, and that's actually done intentionally so that the battery has clearance to get out. Uh, so this is a rigid seat post, doesn't have any suspension, but it does have kind of a trap door. If you pull up on this little tab right here, then the seat itself will rock out of position. And that will allow you to get the battery uh, out of the bike. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, so it does come with a unique key. Uh, so this is the key that you see for the, the Avenue or the Avenue. Um, it doesn't fit in any other bike that we got here. Um, so you put that key in there and then you turn it to unlock physically unlock the battery from the bicycle then you got to get the key out because otherwise if you pull it up it will come into contact with this part uh, of the seat stay uh, the frame right here um, so that's uh, you know that's it works uh, and let's see then you use your other hand and just kind of pull up on the bike on the battery and boom there you go uh, so this is your battery uh, comes off pretty easy and of course it'll go back in pretty easy as well let's go ahead and do that uh, so it's kind of hard with one hand and one camera on another hand. So let's see, we'll get it pretty close, put it in position right there. Now I'll get the key out of my pocket, put it back in, turn it, boom, we're ready to rock. And now the bike is, or the battery is locked into the bike and we can go ahead and go for a ride. You could actually go for a ride with it unlocked, but it might bounce around. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And that's because of the positioning of the frame here. It's kind of kept in position in a safe little spot. So it might bounce around and it could turn the bike off if you don't have it locked into position. Um, but I don't think you'll lose it unless you go upside down and then you got other problems to deal with at that point. <laughs> so let's go ahead and turn the, the seat back down. Um, so uh, this would be a good chance to jump into the electric system. But before we do that, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the at the um, default accessories, I guess we'll say the uh, the included accessories, which is as you see it. This is the bike as you see it stock it does come with these metal fenders, which are nice. I really like metal fenders. The color match to the bike. I mean, I can't stress how cool that is. Uh, and the, the frame mounted um, rack is also color matched to it as well. Um, so they have different colors for the bicycle with different colors for the rack and the fenders to follow suit. Uh, so this rack mounts down to the, the very back of the bike here and also mounts to the metal fender. So the fenders being metal is not just a cool thing because they're um, kind of stiff and don't need to be adjusted so much, but they're actually a little bit thicker than your average metal fender. And the, the reason for that is because it's supporting 
uh, part of the frame for the rear rack, which is important because this rear rack very well could carry the most precious cargo. Um, we'll kind of talk about the accessories in more detail, but I did want to mention that the lights are integrated and that wire comes in through the fender. Um, you can mount a lot of stuff on here. <laughs> you can tell I'm kind of excited to get into that, um, but I won't. I, I promise I'll save it for later. We'll bust out all the accessories and I'll show you what they do. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the electric system. We kind of talked about the battery real quick for mounting and dismounting. That's a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, uh, by the way, which is pretty cool. Does have a main on off switch on the battery here. So right now it's in the on position. If you rock it down now, it's in the off position. Uh, so this is actually the charge port for the battery itself. You can charge the battery, whether it's on the bike uh, or off the bike. And coming into the back of the bike, uh, this is a 500 watt hub drive motor from Shang Yi. Uh, Shang Yi is a company that makes lots of electric bike motors. They don't have a huge brand name in the US quite yet, um, but they're coming. You know, they do a lot of good stuff over there. Um, nice stuff. Uh, so that 500 watt geared uh, hub motor, of course, that is the battery. Down here is the controller. Uh, it's actually built in right there. So if you wanted to get to it, you got some screws over there to get access if you needed to change that out. It's not terribly common for a controller to go out, but that's where it is in case you're curious uh, so that all of this is the electric system that powers it but it's all controlled up on the front of the bike uh, with the rider uh, so let's go ahead and turn on the power switch here we'll go ahead and peel that off all right we'll turn on the power switch and the system will boot up and show you a couple of things up front you got your speed right in the middle uh, telling you how fast you're going in miles per hour you can see the odometer. Uh, right now we're at 0.0 because uh, I actually went through a factory reset a minute ago. Uh, the This ruler looking thing is actually a power bar for the battery level. So right now we're looking at about 100% on there. And as you use the battery, these little things will come down in segments. Uh, so the pedal assist level is on the front and the left. And that is actually controlled by pressing the up or down arrows on the remote attachment, not too far away uh, in this case. Uh, so when I press the up arrow, that will increase pedal assist to two, three, four, five is the maximum. You can scale that all the way down. You can actually turn it off if you want, and you just want the speedometer and want to see how fast you're going as you pedal regularly without any assistance, if you so choose. Pressing the mode button will cycle through on the bottom the trip set. Um, there's actually two trip sets, uh, as well as a max speed and an average speed that kind of goes back and forth between these two uh, display panels uh, right up there. So the bike does have a throttle, which is a really nice feature for the United States of America. Uh, when you press down on this little uh, thumb tab right here, uh, that will engage the motor without having to pedal. So you can watch my pinky kind of push that down and then see the motor kind of kick in. Right now it's going pretty slow because I don't want to go too fast in midair. Um, but that's actually tied to the pedal assist level. So right now it's in pedal assist one, so it doesn't go terribly fast. It goes to about 10 miles an hour. And then when you increase that, that'll increase the top speed as well as how fast it gets there. Um, so I don't know, it might have 12 miles an hour, a little bit easier to get to and so on and so on. So the pedal assist level controls the cap of the throttle, but it also controls how much assistance you get as you pedal the bike. This bike is equipped with a cadence based pedal assist system that's right in here. So there's a static point and then rotating the pedals as you pedal the bike normally actually counts how fast you're going. And depending on what level of pedal assist you're in, it will give you more assistance uh, as you go along. Uh, so I think that about covers it. We've talked about just about everything except for one thing that I've almost left out. And that's actually the kickstand. Uh, so this is a 40 millimeter provision for a kickstand, but I like the positioning because it's actually recessed from the back of the bike or recessed to the back of the bike. It's very common for a kickstand to be mounted dead in the center. That's fine because it's good for stability. Uh, however, when you push the bike backwards, like in a garage or a showroom, pushing the bike backwards causes the, uh, the back wheel to move, it causes the cassette to move, causes the chain to move, causes the uh, pedals as well and the cranks to move backwards as you're pushing the bike. And so if you have a kickstand that's coming down in the center, it can actually come into contact with there and then the bike kind of locks into position and it won't let you push backwards anymore. It's not a big deal, it's easy to fix. Anyways, this bike does not have that issue <laughs> because uh, the kickstand is mounted in the back of the bike. So you can actually push this backwards to your heart's content and it's really good. And it's not so bad for stability either. I mean, I kind of talked about being stable in the middle, which is true, but in a bike like this, if you're mounting something heavy on the back, um, then having the kickstand in the back too, it's actually not so bad. Um, so it's pretty good. If you have something where you put stuff up in the front as well as in the back, 
it's kind of a finer issue. You kind of get to splitting hairs when you talk about stability when you're mounting on a bike that's not moving. Um, but anyways, let's just go ahead and jump on the bike, get it moving, and yeah, it's my <laughs> I love this part. All right, so I kind of got away from the park a little bit so I could get into more of a um, kind of like an urban, not quite, not quite suburban environment just along the way. Um, and that's really where the avenue uh, kind of shines, is in an area that is paved, of course, um, but also something that you know, requires a little, slightly more technical riding. You could totally take this on the park. I mean, it's, it's gonna do fine right there, uh, but also it can utilize a lot of extra cool things about the bike when you get into, um, when you get into something that's a little more, I guess like commuter uh, adventurous, <laughs> if you wanna call it that. Uh, so with the avenue, um, let's go ahead and cross this street here. I'm glad, really glad this bike has a throttle. Then I can just gun it on a stop and I feel pretty good. Uh, so anyways, um, with the Avenue, the, the accessories on it, the rack, you know, the fenders, the lights, they make it really easy to jump on for uh, commuting. I know that the, the standover height is also pretty low, so it's easy for someone to get into from that aspect um, for uh, accessibility. Um, but also it's easy because you don't have to worry so much about getting wet when it's a slightly rainy day or you don't have to worry about lights because you got a set of lights on here that are integrated into the main battery. It, it's, it's kind of like a, removes a lot of the cares or concerns that a lot of folks have about riding. I know that you know, there's a lot of folks that I've talked to who say, hey, you could ride a bike to work. And they'd say, ah, oh, well, you know, I don't want, I, I want to be seen. You know, I need a pair of lights. I don't want to go get lights. I think the batteries are dead or oh, I might get wet or... You know, oh, I don't know, it's just so much to get into. So this kind of removes a lot of that, uh, like a lot of commuter bikes. Um, one really good thing about this bike in particular is the aesthetic of it. It just looks good, you know. <laughs> I'm one to uh, kind of uh, get flashy from time to time, uh, but I know that this bike, it would really fit. Um, I know lots of people like that who really enjoy a bike for the way that it looks as kind of like an extension of their personality. And I think that this kind of works in that way too. Comes in a few different colors. Uh, this cream color is the only one that I've seen in person. Um, but the other colors should be pretty good. I mean, they, you know, they're a bike company, so they're gonna want something that appeals to a lot of people. So you'll probably find something that fits your fancy. Um, I really do, I'm trying to avoid talking about the accessories <laughs> because I wanna talk about them in a little more detail. I wanna like get them all set up and stuff. Because um, Pontus, uh, the, the main guy over at uh, Blix Bikes, was telling me about them, so I want to go back and check those out. Um, but one thing I do want to mention is that the rack on the back can actually carry um, a kid's seat, and I like that part a lot. If I got time, I'm totally going to put a uh, sweet pea on the back of this bike and we'll go for a little ride together. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about how the stability works, because right now you can see that I'm pedaling without any hands on the handlebars on a nice uh, straightaway here. And it's pretty comfy. You know, the bike has some good stability with those slightly wide two inch tires. Um, and yeah, it feels really nice. So I would definitely consider this a, a really easy going uh, commuter bike, if that makes sense. Okay guys, so between the style, performance and utility, let's talk a little bit about the utility of the Blix bikes. I'm actually here with a pretty good lineup of accessories. Uh, so as it stands, I'm with the bike called the Avenue. Uh, and this one does have a back rack on it uh, by default. Uh, that matches the color and everything. Uh, right now we have one accessory on, uh, which is a single-sided pannier. Uh, this one is kind of like the bucket style uh, in which it's just a big uh, cavernous area to put something in and it fits onto the rails here. Kind of pull up on there and then whoop, off it goes. And that's the single side. There's also another single side in brown uh, that has a flap over it. That one's a double side, so it actually fits over both sides of the rear rack uh, that way. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the front because that's where some of the fun stuff comes out. Uh, so on, the, on this particular rack here, uh, this one you'll see matches the cream color of the bicycle. Uh, so Qantas is going to pick that up. So this front rack fits right onto the front of the head tube there and it replaces that badge and you'll see it actually fits the style really well. It fits the aesthetic of the bike. But one awesome utility feature is that the light is mounted on the fender up front. So that light is not coming into contact with the rack uh, or the front basket. But this front basket is actually modular. So if you don't want this particular one, there's actually some other options as well. 
so he's got that platform, which is a really strong um, platform that totally looks like a snowshoe. Um, but it fits into that same spot and with it it has some extra space if you wanted to mount a larger basket uh, Such as this one and this basket also fits on the back if you wanted to uh, and you can also fit that other um, Square shaped one that's more like a pizza box shape if you wanted to get some oblong shapes Up onto the front of the bike and this extends it out a little bit so that you still have a little bit of clearance for steering If you got a solid, you know cylinder going up, you wouldn't have all that much steering but if you had something a little flexible even a cardboard box or could kind of shape it that way then you still have all of your steering you still have the light going down there and everything uh, one last thing i wanted to talk about was the yep seat it's actually my personal favorite that's why i put it in the back <laughs> so the yep seat is is not specific to blix at all it's a kid's seat but what is specific is that the mount for the yep usually fits inside of an adapter or a specific uh, rail system for a rack but inside the blix it actually fits into this window that is on all the rear racks which is really cool because uh, you can just slap that guy on there tighten it up in the back and then um, let's see get this little guy for safety strap that on there and then you're ready to rock with a little kid in the back and I like that a lot because I like to go for rides with my little girl she's three years old and she loves it too you know it's it's like pulling teeth trying to get her in the car but if you want to get her on a bike boom she's there so it's really nice to have a really quick system to get the uh, yep seat on the back there without having to fiddle with any kind of rails or adapters or anything like that so pretty cool stuff Okay guys, thanks for checking out the Blix Avenue with me. It's been pretty fun, I like it a lot. Uh, so if you wanna check out the full specifications for this bike, go to electricbikereview.com where you can compare all the measurements of this bike, including the weight and the reach with other Blix bikes, as well as other electric bikes that are out there in the great wide open. So yeah, thanks again for watching guys. And thank you very much Pontus for showing me the bike. Thank you, it's been great. If you wanna know more about the Avenue and the accessories that comes with it, that you can buy with it and so on, go to our website, blixbike.com. Thanks again, guys.